Hey guys, so building on top of my last video, <coughs> I'm now going to show you how to save data in the real-time database. So we're using the real-time database because it is the most straightforward one to use. Um, you can just drop in any JSON that you want. If you have more complex data, more complex use cases, and you need um, indexing, searching, you might want to consider using Firestore, the new database, which is in, <clears throat> currently in beta. So, to in order to activate the database, we just go to console.firebase.google.com. We select the project that we created in Dialogflow here, which is in my case get name, and then we literally just click uh, start now, and we can just use this default setting and uh, just activate that's how you do it and now so going back to dialog flow so what we're going to do is in the last video we received the name of the user so now we're going to save it in the database um, obviously be mindful what kind of data you save in your database uh, don't save the name if you don't have to with GDPR and everything these days so this is just an example um, Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to the get name intent where we recognize the name via the system given name entity and we're gonna remove the default text response here and we're gonna activate enable webhook web call for this intent. Um, I'm gonna save this before I forget. So I removed the response here because we're going to use the webhook in order to return us a response. The next step will be going to fulfillment. Um, by default this will dis be disabled so you gotta enable it and we're going to use the inline editor to edit our webhook because it's going to be only a couple of, couple of lines of code. If you get more complex you can always do it on your local machine and push it using the um, the command line tool that is provided by Firebase but for this one this is good enough okay so these imports are already here by default the only thing that I added was requiring Firebase admin uh, which I need in order for the database interaction and then I'm calling initialize app here which uses default credentials to initialize the connection which I'm not sure if it's super happy about I got some warnings here estimating the Firebase config so you might want to be specific for a production app but this is just for demo purposes so it works without any config which is great. Um, also because I created my um, my Dialogflow agent a while ago I needed to update the admin and Firebase function to the latest versions. In order for the initialization to work um, I need to update to the newest version otherwise you need to be explicit with the config Cool, so again this is this comes out of the box, a little bit of um, boilerplate code and then what I did is I created a function save name which handles my saving of the name, the name recognition and then saving it to the database. So the first thing that I'm doing is from the parameter that the system given name entity recognizes. So I'm, I'm taking this here from the agent dot parameters dot name, saving it in a constant. Then I'm doing this. You're gonna see later why I'm doing this. So I'm just handing it over to another constant. We're go uh, yeah, we're gonna output the response here by calling agent dot at and then saying thank you, whatever your name is. So that is why I removed the response from the intent because this is the new response. And now the interesting thing comes here where we save in the database. 
Okay, so you see I just activated my real-time database. Uh, there's nothing in there. Uh, and what we're saying here is push the name data to a well to a collection called names which if it's not there yet it will just create it so it will literally just dump all the JSON, all the data that you tell it into the database because this doesn't exist it will just create it, you'll see in a moment and uh, yeah, that's that's almost it. Um, then this last bit is important as well. We're gonna have to map the intent <coughs> where the name gets reg um, gets recognized, where we fill the name slot, and then we tell it, okay, when this intent is triggered, then use this function, and that is pretty much it. Okay, so I already deployed this last time, so let's see how it goes. I'm saying hi, hello, what's your name? It's Peter. Thank you, Peter. Okay, now if we go back to the real-time database, we can see that the names collection here was added and a piece of data was added with the name Peter. Okay, great, that works so far. Um, I could leave you here, but I want to finish a full working example off the back of the last thing that I showed, which was not only using the system give name entity to recognize the name, but recognizing all kinds of names. So we had this we had this loop here where if the name isn't recognized by get name with the system given name entity. We have a catch all, and that uses system any to recognize any name. And then we're because well the user could enter anything, uh, so we have to confirm then if that's the name. And if they confirm positively, whatever name they add, the, it'll go to this. Um, confirm name yes intent so that is the second hook point where I need to uh, save the name that has been successfully recognized so I'm going to get rid of the text response here as well and activate the webhook by saving this and then we just gotta remember the name of this intent because we have to map map this in our fulfillment code uh, okay, so I'm just gonna add another line here where I map this intent to the same function, save name this will almost work not entirely, that's where these other lines come in so because we're just confirming the name and not uh, recognizing, not slot filling the name within that intent the name is actually saved in the context of the previous intent where we filled the slot with the name and that's why we read the context here so I'm, I'm, I'm using the same function to both handle both intents and in the one case the name comes as a parameter, parameter, and in the second case it comes by the context. And then I just added this logic here. Now you can see why I was saving the parameter to another constant name because we have the simple logic here. If the ramp parameter exists, then that means we came from the first intent, get name. If not, then we'll probably get the name. By, uh, by the context, which is this one, and would come from the second intent, confirm name yes. Cool, I'm going to deploy this. And the rest is the same. So once we have the name, we just return the answer and push everything to the database. Cool.
might be worth adding a, a further safety net at, at some point, but for demonstration purposes, that is shall be enough. Cool, so successfully deployed. Let's give it another try. Hello, what's your name? Okay, now I'm gonna have to be creative. I'm gonna use a very German name, Dieter, which is not in the given name entity. Can you confirm that DJ is your name? Yes, I'm confirming that. Okay. Maybe we're still deploying. Let's give it another try. Uh, what's your name? Alright, there we go. Thank you. It's interesting how it told me that it was done deploying, but it still didn't work. Okay, just try it again if that happens. And now we can see in the real-time database, cool, that name was added as well. Yeah, and that's it. I hope that was uh, useful as a short intro on how to save data. I'll see you in the next video.